And I will keep the speech to considerably less than 20 years. All right. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Now, laughter there. Now, the Desert Star started actually more than 24 years ago when I learned scuba diving in 1988. And you see at the beginning of the tree here some of the rough looking stuff that stood at the very beginning of it. I learned scuba diving. I used to lose sight of my dive body. Dive instructor would chew me out, so I decided to go to body finder, and that's what got the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. But it was rough at first. Um, generally, the technology didn't work at first, but it did work well. And there were times where I'd go around. I remember going to a Navy installation back east, all set up with Frankenstein, one of the guys over there to demo it, and it just outright failed. Know, said come back later you know um, a while later we got our first big hit we got a SVIR contract um, from uh, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration $50,000 and I thought we hit the big time this was it $50,000 was just an unimaginable amount and the first aqua map system which was tested on an underwater laboratory in the aquarium laboratory got, uh, got delivered. Uh, Adam Harvey became the first employee of Desert Star Systems at the time. So this is the point where it became clear that myself, I couldn't do it anymore. Some friends had already helped me, and so we kept building. And Adam can tell you some stories, talk to him, and he'll tell you how rough it was at times. But I hope also how much fun it time, you know. Later on in the year 2000, Desert Star Systems got transformed from a sole proprietorship to a uh, LLC, a corporation, a limited liability company. And the first generation partners, as we call them, which is Adam Harvey, uh, uh, Greg Holtmeyer, uh, Greg Nott, and Andy Goldstein joined in and worked for Sweat Equity to bring it forward. We had moderate commercial success. Uh, we managed to keep the bills paid. And as you can see in this tree, we managed to build more and more products. But we really never had a real breakthrough. Time always goes on in life and things change. And so over time, the first generation partners left the second generation took over. Um, that's uh, uh, Matt Crenshaw and um, Tommy joined, and Jesse, of course, you know. Um, uh, Tony Sandoval, who's not here today. Um, and, and things started speeding up. We developed a plan of growth product. We started to execute on that. What you see today is the first signs of real commercial success. As, as our sales have grown, as we are delivering high quantities of sea tags that, that all of you are involved in, as we are delivering this pyramid of ARC1 series. So we did good in that aspect. Um, the idea is really of building a company uh, is to help your environment, to help the scientists, to help our government and national defense, for example, to make a difference, to build something that is bigger than yourself. And so therefore, we have set a plan now to reach from up from our current $1 million of revenue per year, a level of $5 million within a few years. But to do that with not many more employees than you see here on the parking lot today. So that means a big increase in productivity, a big increase in professionalism, and a lot of opportunities for everyone. But talking around, it's, it's very clear to me that Times are changing, and you guys here don't want to work for some faceless corporation.
that is not what you are here for. We've seen that manif manifested in society all over in the last few years, for example, indicated by the Occupy movement. And I want to make this perfectly clear. What Desert Star Systems is about is not profit first and foremost. It is about excellence, about spirit about really believing in something and doing really good with it and having fun doing good with it. And as a result of that, with smart execution, which we will provide, success will follow. That is the fundamental strategy. But you can see how from the beginning, where I worked at it myself, and then the first generation got involved and so on, is not something that a subgroup of people can do. It is really and truly a team effort, and it will only work if all of us are participating. If I look at the vision of Desert Star down the road a few years, what I see is not a successful Detroit car manufacturer with rigid rules and such. We are better than that. You guys are better than that. What I have more in mind, I thought about the right image, and the image comes to mind is the bridge of the Starship Enterprise, if you will, <laughs> Star Trek. A bunch of committed professionals who look out for the mission before they look out for themselves. And I believe that this is a far more invigorating environment to work in than one where we are all just trying to get by. We all want to excel. And this is what I expect here at Desert Star. Now, I should say this will apply not just to top people, but clearly the first time anybody walks through the door for their first day of work at Desert Star Systems, um, they should feel part of it and they should be held to the same high expectations. You know, some people tell me, I bet these ideas, some people tell me that's impossible. In particular, young people who have never worked in a company before cannot live up to these standards. I disagree. I believe it is a matter of the environment that you put everybody in, and I believe you will live up to that, and you will have a good time doing it as well. Um, there is some specific policies that we will enact. We had a uh, meeting, uh, the last uh, a direct report meeting, or a couple weeks ago maybe. We discussed an idea. Again, it actually ties back to something that the Occupy movement has been saying, which is that there should not be this giant inequality in poverty. And I think it is counterproductive to have that. And therefore, the uh, owner's group has committed itself, and we will write it down in, in the partner's agreement, uh, it's probably at the next partner's meeting, that the pay ratio at Desert Star between the highest paid person and the lowest paid person will be limited. And it will probably be limited at about five to one. Meaning in practical terms, if you start out in our company, and you make $20,000 a year, which is 10 bucks an hour, you can be guaranteed that nobody in this company is pulled down more than 100 k And the idea is simply this, that we do not want to lift just the individual. We want to work as a team, and a 5 to 1 ratio will provide enough room to grow for you within the team, enough spread, and, and it provides that essential mechanism to bring the whole team on board, get everybody involved, and I think this is, in the end, the only way we can succeed in any case. So, a few years down the road, I hope it that uh, our uh, lowest salary will be about 15 bucks an hour, you know, um, and, uh, uh, you know, then maxing out from there. Um, now, there is a requirement to it, and that is, this only works if we are each individually committed to it. You have to have hard work. And very important, you have to have reflection. 
I just screwed up the other day myself. You know, there was a board that we made for the APA, and I didn't do my review work right, and we ended up with holes on the board that are too small, which is now going to cause a hassle for production. That's my failure, right? But when I do something like that, I have to recognize it. And that applies to each and every one of us. And as a result of that, along with the uh, 5 to 1 ratio policy, there's a companion policy. And that is, within the next few months, we will publish all of your compensations for everybody to see. It will be complete transparency. You will be able to look it up on a board probably up there. There will be a file on the server. And you are encouraged to look it up um, where you stand. It is meant to be a tool that you can judge yourself again. Um, you are encouraged to talk to your supervisor and say, hey, why am I paid this amount? Why are these people paid more? And your uh, manager is instructed to give you information and to say, you know, you're doing good here, but this is areas of improvement. And the way you want to look at that is like if you're going to the gym or if you're on a sporting team, your numbers are known to the whole team, right? And you look at whoever's better than you and you aspire towards that goal yourself. That's what we are looking for. I realize that that is not something that is for everybody because what that really means is that Desert Star system has to be a high priority in your life. You know, it won't work otherwise. If it's a thing that you're just not about it, um, then it won't work. And that is understood will not work for everybody and I believe over time we might see some changes in the makeup of the team depending on who is interested, who wants to change. But in the end, this is where Desert Star is going. This is our plan. We will go there and I invite you to come along. And with that, let the journey begin. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Was it less than 20 minutes? 20 years? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so enjoy some food. You know, um, Matt has some a bunch of uh, new demonstrator technologies here. Check that out. Yeah, I was yeah. wondering what that was. It's a GoPro. It's the GoPro? I'm going GoPro with GoPro. Yeah. That's a Kira. Oh, yeah. Makes me a Kira. It's like, wow, the video call is so good. And that's what it's all about. That's how we're going to start the whole movie. We're going to put up that piece on YouTube, but we're going to start the video. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you brought it? No way. No.